don't cry. Are you crying there? Is that a tear? <laughs> but you don't cry, Max. Yeah, no, it's it's just that now I'm the only one with a saturated group head here. Oh, that's right. That's true because we got a big announcement to make. Yeah, Nick has done something silly. Well, okay. I mean, I, I mean, I do do a lot of silly things. I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm saying no because I'm <laughs> defensive, but I don't know whether I've done something silly. Um, well, let's put it this way. Hmm. How long have you had it? No, okay. I know where you're going to go with this. Uh, I know where you're going to uh, go with this. Don't say, don't say. <laughs> How long have you had it? Shh, shh, don't say anything because you're going to ruin the punchline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Good. but yeah, but what I would just say, can I just say before you, before just to put this in context. Mm-hmm. Uh, before you start making fun of me, uh, is that because <laughs> that's what I have the whole episode is going to be you just making fun of me. But what I would Not say is episodes. what I'd say is that as I look back on my on my many years of life, I realize that mm-hmm. all of the sensible things that I've done in my life are really very boring. I don't look back on those and have happy memories at all. I don't go, oh my God, I did that sensible thing. I'm going to really go and tell my, you know, I remember that. That's something that's mm-hmm. a story for the kids. No, yes. you don't. It's all the silly things that you've done that are a lot of fun. Exactly. So I bought a, um, I, so I, I bought a Rocket R58. I would say the Italian of it, but I can't say it's a Cinque Cinque Cinco. Cinco, Cinco <laughs> what is it, Max? <laughs> Cinquantotto. Cin- yeah, you see, my dad can say that as well. My dad kept rolling it off. I'm like, it's it's a Cinque Otto. No, no, it's a what was it again? Cinquantotto. Cinquantotto. You are very quiet. Yeah. Oh. It's a cinquantotto. Oh, okay, that's a little bit better. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Is there a volume thing on your end? No, I no? can turn okay. some knobs, but okay, can't really do much about it. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so I bought that. Yes. Let me tell you the reason why, though. First of all, uh, is because mm-hmm. I was looking. At, as we know, look, I was. Because it was available. Looking, hmm. It was, <laughs> it was available. <laughs> well, no. You know what? It just sometimes you got to listen to the universe. Uh-huh. And what it was, um, I was looking at the creme, the uh, the the Lelit, which I really like, the Lelit Bianca. I actually had a conversation with Lelit in Italy; they were very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and the ECM Synchronica. And the thing was uh, that um, I can't talk about the ECM, but for the creme and the Lelit, um, I you sort of have to go through one one place to buy it here in the uk well there's a few different places but there's one main, main place one. which is if you talk yeah. to the manufacturer they say well this is our our main distributor so it's the importer I, actually yeah the importer yeah and i spoke mm-hmm. to them a couple of times and i didn't get a hugely warm feeling from them mm-hmm. um the second time around i mean they were very friendly to me but just to give you an idea that, that the second time around they said um because I wasn't just saying, look, I'll place an order, because obviously that would be far too simple. I was saying, can I come down when COVID allows, right? Can I come down and walk in and choose a machine and buy one? So look, look at a couple of different machines and, and buy one in the warehouse and, and, and maybe film it and put that up for the podcast. And, you know, their answer was, um, you know, I, I'll, let me go and check with the, the boss. I sort of what this is the first time I called them about. Uh, the first time I called them, I said, "Can I? Can I have one? <laughs> can I? Can I try one?" And they said, um, "The boss will call you back," and he, and he never did, or he'll email you, and mm-hmm. he didn't. Uh, and which is that's okay. Where you ruined the relationship already. That's probably where the relationship went downhill. Uh, <laughs> then I followed it up by saying, "Look, I'm just going to come and buy one, but I don't know which one I want to buy. Can I just look at them?" And they said, um, "Sure. Let Let's let me talk to the boss. If you don't hear back from us in a couple of weeks." Uh, feel free to chase us up. Wait a little longer. And I thought, you know, <laughs> maybe they don't need the money. Maybe, you know, it's all great, but I, I just didn't get a really warm feeling. Mm. Whereas on the other hand, um, I had watched a recent review of the rocket from Carvetti. And mm. I thought, you know what? I actually trust Gareth. Um, I really like him. I trust, he's just a very straight talking guy. So I called him up and I said, um, you know, can you give me a, can you, you know, give me a, a price for it? And he gave me a price for it. And um, I said, okay. And he said, let me, let me check how quickly I can get it to you. And I had it in three days. The guy, I mean, they actually didn't deliver it with a delivery company. The actual coffee mm-hmm. company came, the guys themselves came in a van. I, I don't think so because they, they would have come from Milan. So 
I'm yeah, like, no, okay, but the but in but from the importer, uh-huh. they didn't give it to a. What I'm saying is they didn't <laughs> give it to a courier company to drop off because uh-huh. uh, I think they've had a lot of problems with with machines getting yeah, bent they out tend of shape. to drop these things, and uh, obviously, um, something that is twenty kilos heavy when you drop it, it doesn't really appreciate it. I should know how heavy it is, but I can tell you what I couldn't pick it up. Yeah, it's. But I mean, it, I am pretty sure it's probably something in the ballpark of 20 kilos more or less I, I, more. i'm a very strong person max and although having said that i did do my back in a little bit with yoga so i didn't try too hard to pick it up but i'm a strong I, person i just did do, i did my I back, did in, my back well, <laughs> I, yeah i um i made the mistake i'm doing this I, yoga. I am vegan but i really I, like my steak rare yeah I know. okay all right let's not talk about my yoga problems but uh okay. but like it, it's it's heavier than i thought it's, it's yeah, much well, heavier than i, I thought it's a lot of metal um yeah but anyway so you didn't go for an ecm but uh, and you decided to go for an ecm i didn't go for an ecm because i wanted to buy off of somebody that i knew yeah actually no, no, like, that's perfect. relationships are important an ECM, and uh, instead you bought an ecm <laughs> It looks very much like an ECM. It is an ECM. It's, well, it's not because ECM. it's got the little controly thing down the side, which I always made a lot of fun of. But before we get to that, let's get ah. to the bit where you're going to make fun of me. Yes. Which, so how long yeah, have you had it? Them. How long have you had it? Uh, you know, two days. How long has it been broken for? Well, since it arrived. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> so, so what's actually happened was I couldn't get it. So I, 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 you, you have to assemble a part of it. Because I think some of the drip tray mm. stuff um, gets easily damaged in shipping. So they give you very clear instructions uh, on how to put it together, which probably would take you about 10 minutes. I took about an hour because I read them, reread them, read every word, did it very carefully. The one thing I would say, actually, uh, which I definitely would, 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 would I think it'd be an improvement uh, for them. Is, is some little screws they use to, to put to screw the, the the holders for the drip tray like these plastic slut guides or whatever and they're very robust um but those screws were loose in the box and i was missing one screw presumably it sort of just rolled around and fell through a gap somewhere i don't know um mm. and doesn't really affect the uh affect the sturdiness of it at all but but there was a little minor thing yeah, it could, it could be easily put in a in a bag and taped inside. It would put it in tray. a bag. I mean, how much does a bag cost? You spent, you know, all that money on a machine. Anyway, so that was a little niggly thing of me, mm-hmm. of mine. The machine looks. Actually, it, it can it can actually scratch the the machine while it's being shipped. Uh, no, the whole machine was covered in a, ah, in, okay. a in a bag in a cloth bag. It was very right. no, it was very nicely packed and on a pallet in a bag in a with a plastic. Everything was packed well except for these silly screws um but but here's the thing so i put the whole thing together very carefully and and did everything as i should do and read everything every instruction two or three times i really didn't want to screw this up and then i put my water in from i use a a peak water filter Mm -hmm. i put the water in and to the thing and put the um the tank in which is a very firm fit. You have to push, pull it out quite hard. It's got these rubber handles. It's not a problem, but you've got to push it down hard, pull it up hard, which actually mm-hmm. I like. Yeah, because otherwise it would, it would leak. Because it, it's, and... no, so it's, yeah. it's got one of those um, uh, fittings now that they're quite common that yeah. you have to press it to make it to, to make the water flow make the water it, flow through yeah that's absolutely it, right yeah there's smooth. almost like a little valve there and there's like a little needle at the bottom yeah, yeah, a little is, plastic really, needle spring loaded you push it through and then that lets the water through which is really great because that means you can take the the tank out yeah and you no must be able leaks. to take it out and uh, and wash it correct anyhow um so i put the water in and i turned the machine on and then it said uh then you know, turn the the tap on and the tank will fill and I turned the tap on and the tank didn't fill and a little, you don't have any water sign came on. And I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. And so I spent, oh, I don't know, two hours Googling and trying to find what was and wrong. That is, and that is the, the, probably the worst thing and most frustrating thing. It's very, very frustrating. Because, yeah, you start looking around and people say all sorts of things. Even sometimes they say, oh, it's because of the deionized water that you don't have. That's exactly transition. what everybody said. Now, the, the, 
the way you deionize water in at home it's it's still conductive the reason why you, you in theory according to to these kind of posts uh, the reason why you don't get you get uh, a, an empty tank message is because um, the way this thing measures if there is water or not is because there are two pieces two pieces of metal that uh, um, sense conductivity so if there is water there is current that goes from point a to point b and the circuit is closed and and it means that there is water in it so there is conductivity in it if the water goes under the level the the circuit the circuit is open is broken and there's no there's no electricity going between the two now for water to be non-conductive you have to distill it so much you have to double distill the water yeah so that's exactly what some people have been yeah. doing it's impossible no, some people have been doing it uh but, some people have been doing it and rocket came on and said it's a problem don't do that um I mean, so but, but for, for peak if you're just filtering it like with something yeah. that then of it's course conductive. that's not the problem but I couldn't think what else the problem could be. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm trying every type of water. Then I'm putting tap water in, then I'm putting salt in the tap water and putting that in. And I'm doing all this stuff. It's just, you know. Anyway, then I thought to myself, mm, maybe the water, because I didn't know where the, the sensors were. I thought maybe it was where the valve was. Mm. And I looked in there. And of course, I had a little bit of water. And I thought, well, maybe that's the water from the original water I put in, of course. And that's not. So I started soaking that up with a towel. I mean, I, I went through, you know, yeah, so if we're gonna have a laugh, I mean, let's have a good laugh, right? So I was oh, doing fine. all of this <laughs> and because uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bother you. Um, and I actually did want to bother you. I, I really did. I really wanted to bother you, <laughs> you never but, but I didn't. It's just, just shows the strength I'm of character. I'm struggled to, I struggled to reply. <laughs> no, well, I just, uh, I just, I didn't want to, I wanted to exhaust all options rather than just run crying to daddy on the first, on the first hurdle. So, um, <laughs> so I, 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 I did all this and then I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't work it out. So I went to bed all, you know, and obviously cried myself to sleep. And then, um, I dug deep into my philosophy and said, you know what, this is, uh, this is, you know, it's a first world problem. Just don't worry about it. Just you know, let your expectations drop. And that obviously didn't help. Uh, so then, <laughs> so the next day I went and looked at it again and I was, I was taking the tank out and pushing it back in, make sure it's seated properly. And suddenly it came on. Suddenly the machine came on. I didn't know what it done. So, and then it went off again. And obviously, <laughs> you know, this, this was a clue, but this was a clue that went way over my head. And well, then you and I were talking and I was sending you pictures. This is okay. So at this point I did call home and could call daddy and say, <laughs> my machine isn't working. And um, how did I reply to that? Uh, I think you said, get lost. Uh, no, no. I was very nice. I said, oh. Let me finish laughing and I'll be with you. Oh, that's right. You did say <laughs> uh, when I finish laughing, I'll be with you. And it took quite a while. Uh, so and then you came back and you said, and you said, send me some pictures. And as I sent you pictures, literally, as I w th thought to myself, why on earth would there be two bolts in the side of a plastic water tank? Maybe that's the, and then you wrote back and you went, the two bolts of the sensor. And I was like, oh, God, yeah, okay. All right. I've just figured it out. <laughs> so you tell me, literally, as I just figured it out. So two bolts were the sensors. And then I thought, well, they'll have to connect to the, to the the Something the thing the yeah. i don't want to get too technical with you max but the thing i think the uh, thinking my bob is the um, is the technical term yeah yeah the do widget right because the thing we bob has to connect with the do widget otherwise you know what's like is going to work on magic right so it has to connect it's all very technical mm -hmm. and that the the do widget <laughs> is on the is on the inside of the frame mm -hmm. Whereas the thing me hickey is obviously on the on the water tank. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, if I just push it, make sure it's really can and then it came on. And then I let go and it go off. And I pushed it to one side and it came on. I thought, oh, it's not connecting. And that's when I realized uh that because I thought to myself, well, I haven't seated it properly, but I had. That's when I realized that, that actually all I needed to do was push it so it's on one side. And then mm -hmm. gently let go 
and not put anything on top and it works fine. So that's not really how it's supposed to be, really. Is it not? Are you sure? Know, if I spent, it could be a if feature. I spent, if I spent over a grand on, on something like that, mm. I want to drop the thing and just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I totally agree. No, it's, it's, it's not right. And uh, I don't know if there's a way of fixing it. Um, but, uh, I will, I'll contact the, um, the distributor on, I mean, Gareth was fantastic. Actually, Gareth was contacting me. I wasn't even contacting. He was contacting me saying, have you sorted it out yet? Have you contacted the people? I've, I've tried to get a hold of them, but it's, you know, Easter holiday, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so bless him. He was actually fantastic. Uh, and I said, no, you don't need to do anything. I'll just contact them. Cause it turns out that where the machines are actually located about five miles down the road for me. So, uh, so they can't. <laughs> that's they why can't he hide. drove. But that's why the drive. The guy drove. It was cheaper. Oh, actually, it's a bit awkward. Uh, I forgot to tell them that. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to tell them that the company's registered office is not where I live. Not many people live in their registered office. Uh, so this guy's calling me saying, "I'll be with you in about uh, twenty minutes." I'm, um, you know, I'm, so I'm I'm at this location. I, I thought to myself, "Now, nah, mate, you're way, you're way away. You'll be." I said, "I said to him, you'll be about an hour." He said, oh, okay. He said, okay. And then 20 minutes later, he calls me up and he said, well, I'm outside, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see you. <laughs> I said, well, I looked out my window. I said, I don't see you either. He's like, are you at, and he gave my registered office address, which is in London. And I said, uh, <laughs> I said, is this the only shipment that you're doing in London or are you, uh, are you doing other ones? He said, <laughs> he said, I'm doing a few. I said, oh, thank God. Cause yeah. I said, there's good news and there's bad news. I said, the good news is, you know, I don't live in Cumbria. The bad news is I don't live in London either. <laughs> so um, I gave him my actual address and he's like, okay, I'll, I'll be there in a few hours. He was very nice. Yeah. Very but, nice. The, but, but you can't find one screw. I can't. I'm missing one screw. And I think, I think it was deliberately taken out. One. Just he just one took to it out on the way. He just pulled over on the side of the road and he said, and then. Yeah, I would have done that. Yeah, it actually slightly embarrassed me the fact that um, <laughs> that he was able to pick this machine up. Uh, I mean, we did it together, obviously, when it arrived. And I said to him, how did you how did you get it in the van? He said, I put it in the van myself. <laughs> you know, it's I probably was... just awkward. It's not heavy. It's awkward. No, nah, it was pretty heavy. But anyway. anyway, with all these, have mm. you tried it? That's amazing. Have you had a coffee with it? I've been making coffee the last two days. I've been getting headaches. Like, yeah, I can't stop making coffees with it. Um, <laughs> is it good? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Difference? Now, you know what I wanted to do? I promised myself this. I think I may have mentioned to you that I wasn't going to do the whole confirmation bias thing. You know, I wasn't going to go, well, I've dropped this much money on it, so I'm going to convince myself that it's better even whether, regardless of what I think. I really wanted mm -hmm. to look at it and think, do you know, if it's a waste of money, I'll come clean and say that was a waste of money. Um, and it's not. The, the quality and, and you know, uh, my wife was, was making with her cheap beans coffee as well, and we were all trying different things. Um, yeah, the, the quality of the coffee is definitely a big step up. And I'm actually, I was actually quite surprised what a big step up. And it's kind of hard to put your finger on it. I'd say the texture is definitely better. It's much easier to get a good result. I'm getting a good result. Like, you know, I, I with the, with the Gagier, I was, I guess I was, when I dial in a new coffee, it was taking me quite a bit longer for some reason. I, I don't know why. Maybe that's, maybe that's a false assumption or a, a false assertion, but um, it seems to be easier to make a good coffee with it. And I'm definitely on, do you know those Colombian beans that we got from uh, fire and you've got, I sent them to you. We'll have to, I'll have to ask for them in a second. Um, so I was making, I was finishing those off. Mm. So I'd, I'd had, uh, I'd had off. how much coffee are you having? <laughs> well, a lot. That's a lot of coffee. I'm having a lot Still of coffee. Uh, I've got you some more as well. I'm going to show you in a minute, but Ooh. I've, um, uh, yeah, I was, I had a lot of that. I had probably 250 grams of that, uh, or maybe more, maybe 300 grams of that. I was drinking on the Gagia. Mm. So I was pretty, I had it dialed in. I was really happy with it. I was really enjoying it. I loved it. As I told you, I really liked it. Um, and now I, I feel terrible for the people who I bought it from. Cause I can't remember who they called, what they're called fire and 
tell me what it is, Max. What Iron is and Fire. Iron and Fire. Iron and Fire Colombian. It was really, really nice. Yeah, they're, they're actually they're really amazing. I and I have yeah. to I have to admit, I like them better uh, as a pour over. I, I am even tried as a pour over. I was drinking. I was Fantastic. really okay. All yeah, right, absolutely. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna get some more of it. Um, but uh, but when I put that into the into the um, into the rocket, wow. I was mm. getting more flavor, better texture. And, mm. and I like straight away, straight away. And can I tell you also, I just actually, I did, because I knew you were going to ask me about the porter filters, mm -hmm. the weights, because I get very hung up on the weights, the porter filters. Of course, it's very important. Oh, well, the, you know, the gadget has got brass ones and they're, they're, they're heavy, well, about and surprisingly good. Yeah. They're 480 something grams. Yeah. These ones are 640 something. Wow. You actually can use them to lift weights. If you get two, <laughs> they can replace dumbbells. It's like a multitasking thing. Yeah, I wonder how much of it is in the because um, if I remember correctly, this one has a solid wood handle. No, no, no. it's a plastic handle. Plastic. It's a plastic handle, okay. and that was one of the things that worried me because especially the the knobs mm -hmm. for the steam and the and the hot water looked very hard plastic, but they're actually nicer uh, to feel than I mm -hmm. I thought. Than they than they looked, which was great. I still don't like them because I much prefer levers. Um, you know, but yeah, but well. the, the 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 touching of them is is better than they look in the pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, and the plastic on the on the porter filters is, is is good quality as well, but they're not angled porter filters, which is a shame. I you know what I mean? You have to. They don't go flat when you put them on the table. Nah, you have to put them that's against. A bit them. of a shame, though. It's, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I've seen it in many, in many coffee machines, even not so expensive one. I mean, Nova Simonelli does yeah. it for the Oscar, which is, I mean, pretty cheap. Yeah. And yeah. It's a good solution. It gets awkward when you put it in, to be honest, that that's one of the drawbacks when you, when you, when you put it, when you put it in the coffee machine, if it's angled and it's flat on the table, when you when you go and put it in, you really have to retune your muscle memory because most of the times you actually go and put it as a wedge and then you fiddle around for a little. Yeah. So that, that's the drawback. But I prefer to have it flat on the table because then if you don't have it flat on the table, you have to work either on the edge of the Yeah. What do you, you call I've it? Got, I've got a little mat, but it's a pain in the ass to put yeah. it down. Yeah. Or down you and... get a, a tamping station, but again, it's extra stuff you have to add so yeah i don't want the extra stuff it's a shame it's a shame they've yeah. they, 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 they've missed that thing but there's many other things that are good about it i told you i'm going to do i want to share my screen i'm going to Ooh. play i made a very small little very little, short little video nice um, uh, you, you done a presentation you done a powerpoint <laughs> i've got a powerpoint <laughs> i've got a powerpoint uh, here, pay attention it's only look we've only got 46 slides uh so for the next two hours yes. i'm going to take you through this okay so uh i've done words <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing. You seeing it? Yes. Is it okay, going to be great. on the test? So, so what I wanted to show you. I noticed one thing. What? It's it's smudged. Yeah. I don't oh, don't even it's start. Already I'm, I've become, that's it's, what I wanted to unclean. show you. Look look at that. You see the lid at the back because we put the water. You see how that angles up? Because I can't put it down. Because I put it because the water tank is at a slight angle in order to make the connection. So we're looking at the, the top of it. Well, no, but it's only silly because the thing, because the, the thing's broken, the thing, the connection doesn't, you know, yeah. the doohickey and the do widget don't I know, connect. But, I mean, it's a, uh, that would, that would bother me to be honest. Well, of course it's going to bother you. It's going to bother one me, question. but I'm not planning to, I'm not planning to leave it like that. I'm planning to get oh, it absolutely. fixed. Yeah. That, that's one of the things. One question. Yeah. Can you put it on a timer? I mean, can oh my you... God, that is the best part. Ah, uh -huh. oh, is this that? has changed my life. I'm telling you what, that, that little thing that I took all more the fun out of, and I, you know, I used to really take the, the PISS. Mm -hmm. Don't want to get an ex, you know. Um, no, no, you shouldn't say peace. No, oh, damn it. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, when you're on, on YouTube or whatever, and you go in there and say, are there any explicit words? And you think, well, there's a couple, but I'm really don't want to mark it as explicit just because Max, you know, blew his top once. Do yeah, you know? also, I mean, I have I an accent. There, I, there, could, I could I could be saying that, that there is a piece of kit. Ah, oh, you could. 
I could. Oh, you know why? <laughs> I can a lot. I did a, um, we did an SEO, search engine optimization on the website thing report mm. recently. And uh, they came back and the, they said, ooh, got a lot of, um, a lot of profanity on your site. I, um, I remember you mentioned being hacked, I thought. And, okay, and it turned out it was the dong, which is the Vietnamese currency. Uh, and also, yeah, but you put it everywhere. And also, put your dong we've, everywhere. we've got dong everywhere, <laughs> lots of dongs <laughs> hanging everywhere. And then we've got, <laughs> then we've got retard, which is, which is French for, for slow or backwards or whatever the French word is. But because we've got French translation and um, Spanish translation on the site. Mm. So it sees ratar. It goes, oh, you've got retard and dong on the site. I better get those off. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And uh, all of a sudden it's like a condom advertisement yeah <laughs> so so no um so yeah we obviously we're going to change that we're going to have to get we're going to have to change the machine or get somebody to fix it so that's not going to yeah. stay like that but the, the I mean, time to be honest i suppose you you can probably um uh, tune that thing you should be able to adjust the, the distance i would have thought you tool. know you could just he'll probably just say get a screwdriver and turn it quarter you know, clockwise or something, you know, I, I that's how I, I, how I would build it, but yeah, me. Yeah. But that's you. Um, so, but so the time that, that, that screen, a lot of money, many, uh, many money. Yeah, it is. It is the screen. Mm -hmm. The is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's so easy to set up and use. It is what everybody should have one of those things. I don't have an app on my phone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but it's also not a Texas Instruments calculator with an F1 for this and an F2 for that. You hit a touch screen, it's responsive, it's colorful. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, so touch screens are not very expensive to make. Even if you make a TFT touch screen, it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, a capacitive and 25 touch thing. It can yeah. be a simple one, an, an old generation one. Right. I, mean, I, I guess for 50, for 50 pounds, they throw them at your back. Yeah. I was, but it's, it's really great. The only thing I noticed is that, so I've got, it comes, it comes on and off. And also you can just set one day up and then you say copy and uh -huh. it says, okay, which days do you want to copy it to? And you just select the day. It literally took me two seconds to set it up. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So now it comes on in the morning at, at four o'clock or something. And, um, you know, and then it goes off and then it comes on again later on when, you know, we have our afternoon coffee mm -hmm. and then it goes off again. Um, but the thing that, uh, you know, okay. And also you can turn the second boiler off, right? Uh, which I do. And then I realized that for the, um, well, this is a very edge case kind of requirement. So I don't expect them to do this, but in the morning, I would like to have the, the second boiler off all the time, but to come on in the afternoon, because that's when Lily has a cappuccino. I see. And that's when, and, or sorry, or an Americano. And you need to have for the hot water tap, the second boiler needs to be working. I, I personal, personal um, advice. I wouldn't use that. Mm. I wouldn't uh, use the water from the boiler <clears throat> to make Americano. I would boil a kettle. Well, that's what we started doing. Yeah, um, because um, it, using the, cough, the water from the tank, actually, you, you will deplete water from there so you will add fresh water and mm -hmm. uh, you will add more salt more salts to it so eventually you will have a build up of scale mm -hmm. much more than if you if you don't use it right well because, i'll just turn it off i think because yeah yeah well you can keep it turned off for i personally i would um i would do the opposite i would want it on in the morning the the steamer not because of the to make cappuccino but uh, to heat up the cups because I would store the cups. Ah, oh, no, no, the cup heaters work regardless. Ah, right. And I can tell you that is also one of like that's a life changing thing. That yeah. cup heater is better than the commercial, um, the commercial three group machine I had at the shop. It's the it's a it's the bomb. I don't know what the kids say. Do they say bomb? I don't know. They've apparently no, I probably think dead. That, that went out. Was that from nineteen nineties? Well, yeah. okay. Anyway, oh, I mean, guys, <laughs> probably that's another word that will get caught up on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, it's fantastic. It's really hot. Like everything comes, uh -huh. absolutely great. What I have noticed though is it's starting to scratch a little bit on the top. I put it on. So what I'm going to do is very quickly. I'm going to get um, 
Do you know you can get this little rubber matting that you put uh, in shelves? Like if you're running a restaurant, mm -hmm. you'll always have rubber matting where you put the glasses because you wash them, you put them on top. And if you put it on just like a wood or anything, they'll slide and they mm. come off. So you put it, everything, everything goes on this little kind of rubber matting, which has got lots of holes in it. It's kind of commercial thing. You can get them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you just cut it to size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of those, cut that to size, slap that on the top of the machine mm -hmm. and, uh, and then put everything on top of that. So that'll stop the machine from getting scratched, which would be great. Or but, you can use, um, you can use much more simply a silicone, uh, a silicone mat. Isn't that what I said? Isn't that the same thing? It's, I don't know. So it's a plastic thing. Well, it's a rubbery, the, rubbery thing. Rubbery and I get very confused with, with plastics and rubbers <laughs> and things. Everyone goes, well, is it a PET silicon, you know, monocultured something? And you no, go, no, you don't I, want PET, don't you want silicon because it has a higher melting point. PET might melt. Oh, yeah. And no, I don't, want the, I don't want to get the thing that's going to melt. Yeah. On. And eventually will harden while silicon is going to, to withstand better the higher temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Silicon. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure I get one of those. So, um, so that's really, that's as far as also the shot timer on there and the pre-infusion, the pre-infusion, mm -hmm. the shot timers. I mean, it, it's, it's nice. It's a very, very enjoyable machine to use. Um, and it has a rotary pump, doesn't it? It's quiet. Ah, that is one thing I really, really would like. It's very quiet and I've got a plumbing kit. So when I, as you know, I'm moving house, otherwise I'd plumb mm -hmm. it in. Of course, if I plumbed it in, I wouldn't have the problem with the water tank anyway, but nevertheless, it's always uh, fixed. Yes, but plumbing in a coffee machine is, uh, it, it's a nice thing to do, obviously, of course, but mm -hmm. it, it's, you require, you start requiring, okay, you have to have the filters, you have to have yep. the water treatment plant underneath. It, it, yeah, I'm going to do all of that. Yeah. And do all I that. When know. I move house, I can get all of that done um, because then I just want to think about it. It'll just be done. True. You don't think about it until you have to think about it, though. It's, it's oh, one of those things. It would pessimist. weigh on me. I know I'm a pessimist, but I like to, I like to be the other side of the, of the medal as, as, we, as we talk. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us uh, what, tell us what you think. So, well, I'm obviously we'll talk more about it another time when I've got some more. Absolutely. You know, next uh, week. I would actually would love to have a side by side comparison with the Gaja. Uh, yeah, I'm. Well, you know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do. I've thought about this. Don't tell anybody, but I'm going to get. No, no, no. Um, no. I've got. I got. I've got. I've got five or six machines now. <laughs> so I'm going to. But the Gaja is not working because um, we don't know quite why it's working. I probably I might need a new boiler or something. Uh, so I've got to fix that up. That's just like an escamidal project. And then what I thought I'd do is I put them all side by side and I would just make coffees with all of them and then just talk about, like try and talk objectively about the quality difference, what you're going to get for your money. Everything from a, so we've got everything from a um, original Nespresso, but mm -hmm. we'll put like some specialty coffee in there. It'll be a little bit of a, like a different case. But then we've got the uh, Sage Bambino Plus mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got the Gaggio and now we've got the, uh, the thing. I've also got I've actually got two Nespresso machines. So I've got the original Nespresso, the Virtuo, the Sage Bambino, uh, and the, uh, the Gaggia, and then the, um, the Rocket. So we can take it all the way through. And I've also got two different grinders, but we'll, we'll just use one grinder. Well, you should use only one grinder. We'll use one grinder. I don't know what I was talking about there. Uh, and we'll, we'll just take it all the way through and just see what, um, yeah, what, what, you get for your, what you get for your money. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually that that I'm very curious about. But I'm I'm really happy for you. It's a, I think it's a, it's a great machine. It's it's a great looking machine. It's a, among the, the the metal shiny boxes is one of the of the least boring, I would say. Yeah. It's still a shiny box. So it still has And definitely that. the shiny box has got a it's got it's a double edged sword because it's it's a it's nice to look at. And you think, "Oh, it's fine." I sit there sometimes I just look at it and I think that's a beautiful machine. But then you get insane about polishing it all the time. You think, ooh, if you can fingerprints there, I'll just, and mm. it give, they give you a cloth with it. So you're constantly cleaning it. Yeah. Uh, but part of the reason it's got fingerprints on it is because I'm pulling it out all the time to put the water in the water tank. And, you know, the size of it is such that it fits under a kitchen cabinet, mm -hmm. but you can't get any water and you've got to pull it out. And this thing weighs a ton. Did I mention that? It's heavy. You cannot yeah, just a couple of hundred times. You yes. cannot just pull it out. <laughs> you have to go uh, 
and then kind of walk it like you're walking a refrigerator. Uh, All right. Uh, uh. If you try and put it, it da, 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 like you can't do that. So I don't know if I did that right, but um, it's, <laughs> uh, it's heavy. It's not easy to move out in and out. So that's another reason for, for, for plumbing it in. Mm. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But when you start having this kind of stuff, it does make sense. I mean, I think just the, um, the E61 group head, I think it's about five or six kilos. Just the group head. The, yeah, only the group, the group head. head without the rest. And then you have, you have the two boilers, you have the pump. And the pump, in your case, is actually very heavy because you have a, a, an electric motor. Sorry, an electric motor. motor <laughs> an electric motor. You okay, that, Max? Yeah. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Was okay. just, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Something got me. I've been beaten by a, a were dog. <laughs> Something. Uh, you have an electric motor that is obviously heavy because you have magnets and lots of copper wire and uh, at the end of the day you're probably looking at something about this big which nobody knows how big my hands are so you yeah know, yeah but max is making a, a, a size with his fingers yeah of it's, a grapefruit and, yeah roughly you're looking at a grapefruit diameter so it's a big lump of metal plus you have uh the pump the actual pump uh that is pushed by the motor. Yeah. And that's also another piece of brass. So just that, you're probably looking at another six or seven kilos. Yeah. So just between the group head and the, the motor, it's already over 10 kilos. On the other hand, though, if you think about it, um, if, uh, if the price of metals increases... Um, oh, yeah, you have a fortune in there. <laughs> I, I will, I, I will what, have a good investment. So I wanted to ask you, what material is the, are the boilers? made out of. I think they're copper. You didn't the check? No, oh, wait, no, I don't know. I didn't check. I did check. Of course I did. What do you think I am? <laughs> but I can't remember. <laughs> so I, once I ticked that box, I didn't need to go back and say, you know, I'll repeat it a few times until I remember. I can't remember. Did, did you check? Yes. What, oh, what, what material okay, is it? Let me go and check know. right now. I'm, okay, you're going to make fun of me some more. I'm gonna type that in. Hold on a second. Rocket Cinquecento? No, Cinquentotto. The Cinquecento is a car. Cinquentotto? Uh, boiler, <laughs> boiler, <clears throat> um, and it's uh, it does have two boilers, Max. Apparently, yeah, it's a dual boiler because it's that, a dual boiler. The machine. dual boiler thing gives it away big time. Yeah. Um, boiler construction, mm -hmm. TBS to be substituted. To be met. I don't, I don't know. know. Stupid. Okay. Uh, let's go down to the old uh, Cinque, Cinque Toto. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Cinque Toto. Cinque uh, the Cinque Toto on uh, the rocket page, mm -hmm. uh, which says. Um, blah, Boiler. Blah, blah, yes. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't know what it says. Oh, God. It says uh, Boiler. Yes. Two. Yes, it has a boiler. Um, I don't know what it is. Look, it's, it's, it you'll matter. approve because it's, it's definitely, it's not stainless steel. Tune in next week. Tune in so next week can to find out what the boiler is. Uh, to maybe, find out know. what, what material the boiler is built. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. We're not looking at that anymore. Um, so I'm very happy with, very happy with the quality of the coffee that comes out. Um, obviously disappointed that the, that the, the water tank doesn't fit in properly. Mm. Uh, also, I have another question actually burning and then uh, I forgot okay. what it was. It was burning. Okay. Well, what was burning? I don't know. I think, I think I left the, the, the roast on, uh, but <sighs> apart from that, what, um, can, can you fit the gadget porta filters in it? No, I tried no. and I was really surprised. Um, you can obviously take the baskets out because it's a 58 mil basket. Yeah, the basket is 58 so, mil, so that, that's not... Uh, but you, yeah. It, it no, the, the, it's, isn't it weird? Like the, the little things mm -hmm. are... The, the little wings that come out of the side of the, of the porter filter are... I'm sure each company puts them at different angles. Yes, so that makes they do. it impossible for you to use them anywhere except for the um, machine. You can use the Gaja, uh, the Gaja ones in the Nuova Simonelli. Uh huh. But your porta filter is going to sit at a very weird angle. Okay. Right. So you, 
is not going to, to be in front of you. It's going to be sideways. Max, I tell you what, you know, would you like to know what the boilers are made out of? Yes. Pure copper with lead-free brass end plates. Pure mm. copper. Wow. Pure copper. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's the good stuff, that's your actually. That's the good stuff, Max. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, worst comes to worst, you can actually sell it for good money for as scrap metal. I know. This is this. Is, look, I won't make this mistake again because I made that mistake when I was uh, twenty years old. I bought a mainframe computer as a joke. I ever tell you this story? The mainframe yes. story. <clears throat> yeah, and and it was in Denver, Colorado, and I bought it for a hundred dollars, and uh, I bid the hundred bucks. I was the first person to bid, and I mm -hmm. laughed. I was like, oh, I'll bid a hundred bucks, and I can say I bid on the mainframe, and then no one else bid, and they went to because I had no reserve. To you, when will you collect it? Well, this thing was the size of a room. <laughs> I didn't know. I, could. I tried talking to my girlfriend at the time. It's like you know, maybe if we took the windows out of the house, we could we could fit it in. And um, she said no. Uh, so um, I just left it and forego my hundred dollars and stopped taking their phone calls. But uh, someone told me later on. They said, "Do you know how much gold goes onto the connectors inside those mainframes?" And I was like, "No." And he said. Neither do I, but it's a lot. And uh, you could have made thousands in gold. And I was like, uh, oh. Anyway, so there we go. I've got copper boilers. Max, have you tried this decaf from yes, Outlook? Yes, I like it very much, but it's a uh, very dark it. roast. Funny enough, it's a very dark roast. And uh, it looked, I mean, I looked at it and I, when I opened it, and I couldn't trust my nose because it's extremely fruity. Yeah. But then I looked at it and, it and it had like seven cracks each each bean. So it, it felt really dark mm -hmm. and uh, it runs very fast. It runs a little very, fast. Yeah. It's a very dark roast. Yeah. And it's very brittle. So it makes havoc in my, <laughs> when I do pour over, it, it rakes havoc in it. Right. It, a lot of fines because it, it's very brittle. But it is really nice. Both actually, these and uh, the Iron and Fire, they're very similar in, in uh, taste profiles. I know. They, they are, aren't they? They are very similar. Yeah. I am very good to you, Max. Um, I was actually chatting with uh, Outpost on the Instagram earlier because mm -hmm. they put up some silly story, which was very funny. And then we <laughs> talked and I said, I like your decaf. And we had a little decaf bonding moment. Um, it, it, it is very nice. Yeah, it's very it good. It is a Swiss water process, which isn't the cheap way. It's the good way. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's uh, so I'd recommend those guys. Um, Outpost Coffee. Nice Absolutely. people. Decaf from Colombia. Swiss water process. Definitely very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then the, and mm -hmm. I have to say, it actually makes a Kikas Cappuccino that one because it's it's such Ooh. a dark roast it's very syrupy so if you want to do latte art and uh, all of that fancy stuff that's the stuff i've actually started oh god this is so this is such a horrible embarrassing uh, admission but i've started drinking um, plant-based milk but it's a um, well no because you know well, um, you most do... plant-based milk well what happens is and I, I apologize. This is going to be very unpopular. But the thing is, is that you get all of the vegan converts trying mm -hmm. to convince you that it's as good as or better than milk and everything else. And, and really, it, it isn't. It isn't. It's uh, something me, different. It's something different. But stop telling me that I have to have it because it's better. Um, I used to have this in the restaurant all the time. People would come in and start trying to tell me I should, I should change my restaurant to, to being vegan. And I was like, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to make money, <laughs> to, you know, this isn't in London. This was in a country there. They, they, all they, all they ate was meat. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, um, so, so when people kept, kept telling me I, I should just, oh, you know, this is good. This is good. You can froth it. It's great. You should just use plant-based milk. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, look, I like it, but it's not a replacement. But here's the thing. I've just been tasting this new uh, oat-based milk. And it's not the Alpro one. It's mm -hmm. oat, and, oat and barley mixed together. Ooh. And it's by a company, and I can't remember the name of it. She's going to be really annoying to everybody. But it's, <laughs> They're going to get really It's in a brown. It. It's in, look, just look for the one that's in a brown. Uh, it's in a brown. It's, I get it at Waitrose. It's not available at Tesco, so I look for it. Uh, for the, those people in, in, in old England. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, it's got a, a Swedish or a Norwegian sounding name, like Shurd or Nerd. It's probably Nerd. So uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. but and oat milk actually is very good for, um, uh, for, for frothing because 
it, yes. it has lots of protein. It's and, got the uh, proteins, exactly. And it makes a very good froth. It's actually a believable cappuccino. You can. That's make, what I've been um, doing. I've been making those yeah. cappuccinos for the wife. Yeah, it, it's actually really nice. Try it with the with the decaf. It's really really good. I really I'll, recommend um, it. I'll do that for uh, for her tomorrow. It'll be a nice little Sunday Easter Sunday thing. Uh, and then I've got something for you. Ooh, I am curious now. Yeah, um, I'm not going to come up this weekend, but I'll um, it'll it'll, it'll wait for maybe mm -hmm. next week. It's yellow. Good morning, sunshine. There's a chicken. It's a chicken, the chicken on there. Chicken coffee. It's one two. Um, Great food taste, great taste awards. Uh, it's a blend. That bag looks amazing. I no, know, isn't it a beautiful already. color? I am sold already with the bag. I know. It's exactly what condition. Lily said. It's exactly what she said. She said, I love the bag color. I'm going to steal that color. Um, here's the thing. They do uh, two color bags, yellow and blue. And oh. the yellow, this is very smart marketing. The yellow bags are their blends. And their blue bags are the sim single farm, not even single origin, single farm. I like it. I know it's it's just it's so cr crazy with its simplicity, right? Anyway, no, it's actually really nicely packaged. Look not at only is this, an, oh sorry, let me tell you who this is from. It's from Darkwoods Coffee. Mm -hmm. Not only, um, and please, Darkwoods, make sure my, my commission checks in the, uh, in the <laughs> post. Not only is this amazing Darkwoods Coffee. <laughs> Not only is it uh, got a chicken on the front and it's a nice color, which already ticks the important boxes. Yes. Chicken on front, tick. Chicken. Nice color bag, tick. Okay. Those and are the important the, ones the, out the, the way. Nice, the nice tag on the side. That's what's It's got nice a little tag. tag on the side. Fantastic. It's got your good taste or great taste awards, which is important. Mm -hmm. But listen to, the, uh, listen to the description they give the flavor. Let's see that. French toast on a summer's morning. Let them be smoking. It's a little bit meta, uh, but they're giving the idea. Anyway, it's very nice. It's nice coffee. It's easy to make. So, and I wait, like wait, wait. It. French toast on a what? Summer morning. On a summer morning. But summer yeah. morning where? Um, it probably, uh, it's probably somewhere I mean, in the south of France. Uh, south of France. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it could be, you know, summer morning, it could be glasgow uh, or it could be summer morning in uh, scarborough um, <laughs> where you you, you want to hear something interesting window. max when hear something interesting you open the window and you get uh, and you get the, the wind oh, slapping you across the face the smell of the coal mine still running <laughs> <laughs> i love a smell of a chimney in the morning <laughs> a chimney chimney does anyone say chimney anymore uh i i looked up i got this software that i i, I signed up for ages ago it tells us where where people are from the podcast and i never look and then i looked at it yesterday almost by accident because mm -hmm. they're all stuff. from scarborough and they're all from scarborough uh no they're not actually they <laughs> are it doesn't say what what towns they're from they're from it says the countries they don't but say the, the town but they say where the, the home address actually you know what i I think, yeah. So, um, can I just we say, uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Smithers from uh, Benetton in uh, Michigan, uh, we know that you're listening. Uh, no, they, they, I can't find it now. Oh, here it is. Um, actually, you can. You can see. If I click on where I click on the United States of America, I can actually see where they're from. Oh, there's some. There's people in Appleton. America, Town. Uh, listening to this right what now. What the tasting Appleton. noise from Apple Town? Not Apple Town, Appleton. Apple Town. Oh, okay. Um, we have most of our customers. Oh, sorry, most of our listeners are from the UK. Uh, then United States, mm -hmm. uh, which is very nice. Thank you, United States. Uh, then New Zealand, which is great because I love New Zealand. Uh, Kiwis, go Kiwis. Um, shame about your rugby team, but hey, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think if you want to really insult somebody they're from New Zealand, you probably would. Uh, well, I would jealous because their rugby team is better than better than ours. Um, then we've got Canadians, which are all nice. A eh? Germany, love Germany, Ireland, and by the way, if you ever want to know what, like, really understand what Ireland's all about, read the book uh, "Go Around Ireland with the Fridge." Something like "Going Around Ireland" or "Traveling Ireland with the Fridge." which is a fabulous story about an American who made a bet 
uh, when he was drunk, that he uh, he would travel around Ireland with a fridge. And um, when he was sober, his friends held him to it. So he went around Ireland with this fridge, became quite famous. Great book. And then check this out. Can you guess what the next? So we've had uh, the UK's first, mm -hmm. then the US, mm -hmm. then the Kiwis from New Zealand, mm -hmm. Canada, Germany, Ireland, and then Italy. Nope. Germany. No, no, we said Germany. Germany's above it. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. We have got quite a few listeners from Uzbekistan. Uh, why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? They want coffee. Have you, I tell you what, Uzbekistan, I'll tell you I reason, part of the reason I mentioned it is because I had this friend. I, say I, had this, I haven't been in touch with him for a long time. Uh, and he was a very interesting guy, and he had a guru. Was it a Swami? I can't remember. It was either a guru or Swami. And he used to do these religious kind of um, trips. Mm -hmm. And he was agnostic. So he didn't have a particular God or anything else, but he used to, not religious, spiritual. So he had a Swami or a guru. And a group of them would go off and, and go do sort of spiritual things. I don't really know what they did uh, in different countries. But he would go to amazing places and he'd come back and he showed me pictures of uzbekistan it was not what i was expecting it's amazing it was amazing i desperately want to go to the capital of uzbekistan which is tashkent which i'm probably pronouncing very badly but tashkent uh so to all our uzbekistan uh uzbek colleagues i would say salam doshtim and uh look forward to seeing you in um uh, in uh, tashkent when uh, after covid is done. but i would look it up max i'll tell you what that place is something else so there we go we've got an international audience and um we're famous we're famous across we're not the... really famous oh, i'm not quite i hadn't no one's noticed me in the street yet and said wait are you are you that nick because you're intimidating you're in, you're intimidating you've got the intimidating look really i don't know Make ah. it up as i go <laughs> when i was a kid i wanted an intimidating look and then as you get older you you really want to have the opposite you know I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I'll drop this off to you when I get a chance. Yay, um, chicken. I like chicken. the chicken. I really like the chicken. Really, really nice. Definitely like that. And that's uh, <laughs> great. Next and week we'll 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 I'll try and tell you. Hopefully, I'll have some news about the, the fixing the problem. Yeah. Yes, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I should hope so. And uh, so we are recommending because we are now influencing. Because we're influencers now, yeah, influencers, famous yeah. influencers. Because so, where's my money, by the way? Soon, soon, Max. Checks mm -hmm, in the post, mm -hmm. very soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we're recommending Iron and Fire. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that and Colombian. We're recommending that the Colombian. other one that I forgot, but you remember because you have it there. Which one? Oh, the Outpost. Yes, the Outpost decaf. I recommend the Iron and Fire Colombian. I recommend, I mean, we've been very lucky with the coffees we've got recently. Yeah, actually, actually, as a routine for myself, the, these days I've, I've been doing, uh, I've been alternating the decaf from Outpost with the caffeinated from uh, Iron and Fire. The, the, the tasting profile are, are very similar. Very similar. Mm. I think they're actually from the same region. Uh, they're both from, I think they're both from uh, Julia. Yes. Huila. Uh, Huila in Colombia, which is a common, honest, uh, common, common. To be honest, it's a bit unusual to have this kind of tasting notes from a Colombian. You normally expect these from uh, from um, African coffee. I would, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it was an Ethiopian. Yeah, well, these are these are more. Yeah, you get more floral um, mm -hmm. from Colombia and more fruity uh, in uh, Africa, and this has got a citrusy sort of. Nice fruity fruity flavor profile it's very nice absolutely i've been enjoying both of them actually and um, they they actually go really well together so if you if you if you do like me um that you have a, a decaf and a caffeinated you alternate these two coffees they go really well together yeah there you go there you go so oh. That boom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what i'm doing we're so 90s all right, I buddy, listen. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> All right, my friend, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I will yeah. see you uh, next week. 
and mm-hmm. uh, have a great have a great Easter weekend. Have you got any chocolate on the uh, on the agenda? Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. actually with mm-hmm. chocolate just earlier. I ate mine. Yeah, I, I, I've eaten mine already. <laughs> <laughs> and I say it's mine. It actually wasn't even mine. It was Lily's, but you know, it, it, it fell in your mouth. It was, it was in it the was vicinity. There, it was there and attended and... Uh, it, oh. Pretty much that's the thing. If, if, if there's chocolate in the refrigerator, I feel like it's fair game. Yes. If it's hidden anywhere, if it's anywhere that I can find it, it's fair game. If you really wanted that chocolate all to yourself, you'd put it somewhere where I couldn't find it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you Have can- a great week, Max. You too. <laughs>